lazy, inferior races to do nothing, drawing their welfare checks every month. Do you think that your children are learning good, wise, Christian values? You know, and I know, who controls the schools, the television networks, the press, and the government. Our children for having their noses rubbed into these ideas of social justice and equality. Now you think these damn liberals want equality for you? You think that the kid that's getting a free ride steal your children's future believes in equality? How long are we gonna stand by? and watch this kind of outrage. I ask you, are you going to stand by and watch this outrage? What were the Nazi rallies in Germany like? Is this how it started? Is this how that kind of madness and hate swept over masses of normal people? People like you and me? I've asked myself that question, and I think I don't like the answer. Because the truth is, this kind of thing happens all too easily. It's just a matter of chemistry. Measured doses of despair and dissatisfaction. Add a pinch of someone to blame it on. Throw in a catalyst, a maniac like Martin Burrow. He stirs the brew up, and the reaction's complete. That's when it ignites and takes off on its own. Now, who is it that's going to protect your rights? Who is it's going to fight for the purity of our race? Who is it going to wipe out this war? Well, the prune in this country, the white star! 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 Now, we are involved in a conflict from which only one group will survive. Our enemy must be destroyed! White Star! White Star! White Star! White Star! White Star! White Star! Hate is like a chain reaction. It keeps on going, feeds on itself, infects others. That's why people like Martin Burrow never run short when they spread hate around. It always comes back to them. Never again! Never, never again! again. Never. Dead body you find Tom Kirkwood? No, uh, in this case I was here while the body was still alive. All right, you see something? No, uh, too far away. Not too bad you could have been a star. Hey, right? are you, you a cop? Yeah, I'm a cop. What can I do for you? Robert Adams, Mr. Burrow's assistant. Our leader's been murdered. I want to know what the hell you people are going to do about it. I'm going to provide you with a first-class detective to take your statement. How's that? Look, I know you have to hire these people. I just don't want to have to deal with them, okay? But you watch where you put your hands. Oh, you have nothing left to salute with. You got a statement to make. Let's take it downtown. Come on. <laughs> Hey, maybe he wasn't part of the protest. Maybe Barrow knew it. Well, Mr. Barrow isn't going to make much of a witness, is he? That's Gallo's humor. It's getting to be a zoo around here. Why don't you get the people want to talk to downtown for a statement? Let's go. Let's go. You follow sure. these? Can I? Come on. Come on, Rick. Starting them young, aren't they? There's an age it's OK. Too bad the killer didn't stick around in this one. Somebody might have given him a medal. Frank, no one deserves to be knifed in the street. That's what I thought. You should have seen this guy, Barrel. Yeah, let's get out of here. See you, Tom.
Barrow? Yes. It's about your uh, husband, Mrs. Barrow. He was murdered tonight. I believe you mean my ex-husband, Detective. That's too bad. You gentlemen are going to have to excuse me while I'm getting ready. I have friends coming. We're going to the theater. A bunch of old girls going out on the town. You don't seem to be too surprised by all this. It's what I expected from Martin, Detective. He's been working toward this for the last 20 years. And you must have some idea who wanted him killed. I don't know anybody who didn't. Martin devoted his life to making enemies. Anyone in particular? Well, that was the one thing that Martin was liberal about, young man. He uh, inspired hate in every race, color, and creed. Uh, have you seen a cat anywhere, an orange cat? Mrs. Barrow, this is not a social call. You seem to be taking all of this kind of lightly. Lightly? Is that what you think, Detective? Martin died for me years ago. And I'm not going to go through it again, just for your amusement. We're not asking you to, Mrs. Barrow. If you could just think for a second. I never shared that part of my husband's life. And by the end of our marriage, that part of his life was the only thing he had any time for. I'm not surprised. I don't know anything, and I don't care. So you hated him, too? Hate was Martin's specialty. He had nothing but hate. He had so much of it, he bottled it and sold it. He even gave it a catchy name, the White Guard. Oh, that's my ride. I gotta go. If you really are trying to find Martin's killer, I don't envy you, because there wasn't a sane person in this city who didn't want him dead. Thanks very much. That's it. No, uh, his beard wasn't so bushy. Hey, uh, the noisy protester? Looks like. All the witnesses say the guy went crazy when he saw Barrow. Started calling him a murderer. Probably wasn't too far wrong. What is with you people? One of your own kind has just been murdered, and you don't give a damn. He wasn't one of my kind, Adams. Every one of those lousy bastards out there knows who did it. Why don't you ask them? Mr. Adams, we know how to do our job. Thank you very much. I hope so. I'm putting you all on notice. The guard is not going to sit still while Martin Barrow's murderer is out on the street. The guard had better stay still, Mr. Adams, very still. If anyone is even looked at the wrong way by your people, I will come knocking on your door. Now, we're both on notice. Come on, Kevin. The guy's friend was just killed. Uh, take it easy, huh? You are free to go, Adams. Well, Mr. Adams, I'll see that you get home safe and you stay safe. Freddy can find out from the new Führer. Let's try it again, Mr. Hayes. Your group organized a protest. I've got that part right, haven't I? Let's tape it. Then you can hear it as often as you want. I did organize the protest. I don't know who killed Martin Barrow. Mr. Hayes? I'm Detective O'Brien. That's Detective Jambone. Anything you guys want to know, just ask your friend here. Hmm? I've already said more to him than I've said to my wife for the last 10 years. I gather he didn't find out the name of the man who was talking to Barrow. Look, OK, I know who he is. But I know he didn't have anything to do with it. And I am telling you the truth. You tell us who he is, we will pay him a quiet call if he's not involved. That's the end of it. And if you don't give us the name, this sketch will appear on the front page of every paper tomorrow morning. His name is Harry Jacobs. But you go easy on him. That guy has been through a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah.
our job to find out who did but what if you i'm done getting so a little tired of being told what people will stand for and will not stand for this evening it's okay sarah i'll talk to them you'll have to excuse my daughter gentlemen she doesn't have much faith in the justice system maybe i don't either what do you want to know you were at the protest outside the white guard meeting tonight yes of course Every time they have a meeting, we go to protest it. I try to catch his eye, to see something there, a, a flicker of remorse, something that would let me think a man can do what he did and still be able to live with himself. What did he do? You don't know? No. Fifteen years ago, Martin Barrow murdered my wife. What? I was forming an auto dealership. Barrow was forming the White Guard. A member of his bought a car for me. He was unhappy. He went to Barrow and said I cheated him. They decided to perform the White Guard's first official act. They got drunk. They came to my lot. They smashed my cars. They smashed me. My wife, Elena, came by to pick me up. They grabbed her. He made me watch her die. The masks they wore hid their faces. But they couldn't hide their voices. I picked out every one of them at the tribe. I'll never forget their voices. I visited Helena's grave a thousand times since then. It's the only place I can remember what she was like. So you went to the rally tonight to kill Mr. Barrow? I went to the rally for the same reason I go to every rally to stand up against Barrow and everything he represents. But tonight, he showed me not only could he live with what he did, he could laugh about it. He went too far tonight. Looks like you did too, Mr. Jacobs. I found this buried in the back garden. What do you have to do to get a fresh pot of coffee around here? You gotta quit. All right, so what do you think? Oh, I don't know. I hate putting a man like that through all of this. That's the best lawyer in town sitting there right beside him. If you have any kind of cause, Milton Bartell will be right up there in front. Yeah, what's the lawyer gonna do about the motive, the witnesses, the knife in the backyard? I mean, if he didn't do it, somebody's sure trying to make it look like he did. Oh, believe me, there's a lot Milton Bartell can do with a case like this. Like what? Well, he had a saying in law school. If you can't win by the facts, try the law. If you can't win by the law, try the victim. Well, Barrow deserved killing. How far do you think he's going to get with that? Come on, Kevin. If Bartell has halfway decent psychiatric testimony of temporary insanity, you can be sure that the jury will not convict his client of homicide. Lieutenant, forensic report came through on the knife. No prints on the blade or handle, but the blood matches Barrow's. They say the blood was fresh within a few hours. Anything on the knife? Not inconsistent with the wounds. It was a stiletto, a tie manufacturer. Thanks, Colby. Well, that doesn't give us much, does it? 
It'll probably help Bartell help Jacobs. Hmm. Yeah, right. My uh, client is aware of his rights, gentlemen. He'll be glad to answer any proper questions. Fine. Let's keep this simple as we can and not beat around the bush. The knife found on your property, Mr. Jacobs, has been positively identified as the murder weapon. That isn't a question, Detective. Something to talk about. If you found it in his hand, it'd be something to talk about. In the garden, anyone could have put it there. Mr. Bartell, we're not enjoying this any more than you are. Now, we canvassed this whole damn neighborhood. No one was seen around the Jacobs house all night. Oh, are these the same nobodies who saw Harry plant the knife in his garden? Or are they the same nobodies who saw him stab Barrow in the first place? Now, come on, O'Brien. You can't put nobody on the witness stand. Look, if you want us to believe that someone else put it there, you're gonna have to help us out, Mr. Jacobs. My client isn't under any legal obligation to find the killer for you, Detective. I it's okay, Mr. Bartell. They're only trying to find out who did it. I'm cautioning you, Harry. Don't say a word to them. Mr. O'Brien, I, I could give you a list from here to next week about people who would want to kill Martin Barrow. And most of them would be proud to admit they'd done it. But someone who'd want to hurt me out of it. I, I don't know of anyone who'd have done a thing like this. Well, what's the matter? Did, did I say something wrong? No, Harry. I just don't think they're listening. He was murdered. He was murdered because he had the courage to stand up and tell the truth. To speak out against our enemies and what they are trying to do to this country. He died. For you. You know who killed Martin Barrow. The police arrested him tonight found proof he did it, but will he be punished? These people own the police. They own the courts. This murderer is going to go free. It is our duty to ensure that this man is punished. If the authorities refuse to deal out his punishment, then it will be up to us to do it ourselves. For our future, for our families, and for Martin Barrow. Quicker! did I have, Kevin? Harry Jacobs has no criminal record. He has solid ties in the community. There isn't a judge in the world who would believe that he posed any further danger. There was no way that I could keep him without bail, even if he wasn't represented by Milton Bartell. Elaine, I'm not talking about the danger he posed. I'm talking about his survival. Mr. Jacobs, getting out of here may not be the end of your problem. My uh, clients made bail, O'Brien. You can save your badgering for the trial. What makes you think it's going to trial, Bartell? A lot of people who'd be delighted to try, convict, and execute this man right out there on the street. You're gonna represent him out there? Come on, Harry, I'll drive you home. Look, Mr. Jacobs, if you stay here, we can provide you with police protection. I'm not a big believer in police protection, officer. Maybe you'd like to come with me next time I visit my wife's grave. I'd like to hear what you have to say about police protection there. So, what do you think of our meeting, Detective Carson? You said what had to be said. 
Is that the police force talking? That's me talking. Although a lot of people think the same way I do. Maybe more than you realize. The whole damn world's going to hell in a handbasket. But when you're out on the street there every night, you see exactly what the big problem is. Sounds like you might want to make one of the speeches at our meeting sometime. I'm not into politics. Oh, sure, it quiets down once in a while. And the same damn troublemakers start screwing up things it took us years to fix. It's just the way it is. Your friends at the station seem to be happy enough with the situation. <laughs> Listen, you can't choose your family or the people the department puts you with. Well, then, it's a lucky thing you found us, isn't it? You should come to more meetings. I think you'll find it's not just the way it is. It doesn't have to be that way at all. One thing's for sure. Something isn't working. Hiya, pal. What's up? Nothing. You know when Mr. Barrow was killed? Yeah. What about it? Dad, I saw what happened. I saw who did it. Why didn't you tell anybody? I couldn't. Dad, it was so... You gotta call Mr. Adams. I don't know what to do. Put that Jacob's away for good. Dad, no. If it wasn't him. It was Adams. He did it. What are you talking about? I told you. Adams pulled a knife. And then he stabbed Mr. Barrow. And then gave the knife to Randy Stewart. You're crazy. You didn't see nothing. I saw it, Dad. What are we gonna do? Should we tell the police? You didn't see nothing. You made a mistake. I saw it, Dad. You didn't see nothing. You're not telling nobody nothing. Jacobs did it, and it's the end of it. In this world, there are victims and victors. Martin Burrow was made a victim. He moved too slowly. He allowed the enemy to gather strength, move against him, murder him. That won't happen to me. That won't happen to any of you. It's war. If we have to kill every Harry Jacobs in this country to ensure our safety, That's pretty strong stuff. That's the idea. Keep the pressure on. If we let the media know we won't stand for it, maybe they won't be in such a hurry to cut that scum loose. It's a little late for that, Mr. Adams. What? He and his lawyer walked out a half hour ago. That can't be. It's been on the news already. You really ought to keep up on these things. But I think that's the kind of intelligence I need from you, Randy. It's on the radio, and I have to hear it from him. Hey, Hi, Nicole. Hey. What's the score? <laughs> What's wrong, Tommy? You look like you've seen a ghost. I think I have. I was at a white guard meeting. I thought I saw Freddie Carson there. You think you saw Freddie Carson at a white guard meeting? Wait a minute. That's what I thought I was asking you. Well, you said you thought you saw. Well, did I or did I? No, Frank, did or you did I can't imagine a cop seriously belonging to a fanatic group like that. Well, man, let's not kid ourselves. Cops can be fascists or fanatics You're or wrong. Race. No, 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 not the same thing. This is a police officer. I mean, they have an honor to him. Wait a minute, what are you saying? You would argue with anything just to hear the sound of your own voice, Frank. Yeah. You hate this white guard thing as much as any of us. You listen to her? All of a sudden, she's like defending everybody's rights to whatever he or she wants with his or her own free time. Oh, no. I mean, all of a sudden, if you're a Go cop, it's like that. South. What? Voltaire, he said, uh, I might not agree with what you have to say, but I'll defend to the death your right to say it. Yeah, kinda. What's this guy's name again? 
Volter, Billy Volter. He has a TV show, talk show, late at night. You should catch it sometime. It was on right after Dr. Ruth. Dr. Ruth. On the police! Get out! Get off my property! You killed Martin Burr! You think you won't pay for it? Look at him! Get it all over his face! You don't scare me, you Nazi thugs! Out! You killed a great man, Jacob. Mm. Oh, oh, murderer! Listen, Mr. Jacobs, we offered you protection before. You want to think it over? In jail? My father's not a criminal detective. I can't hide in jail from these stormtroopers. Besides, they've already done their worst to me. Up, huh? Yeah. Take the Frank Jam Bond. What's your name? Rick. Rick Brennan. What'd you do here? Nothing. You can do something to protect us? Yes, we can, and you don't have to go to jail. But you're gonna have a house guest. Christine. Mr. O'Brien. Uh, there might be some justice in the world after all. What are they going to do to Mr. Jacobs? I don't know. It depends if they find him guilty or not. Could they put him in jail? Yeah, that's the way it usually works. You were at the hall when Barrow was killed, weren't you? Yeah, I was there. Hey, Rick, you hassling my kid? No, I was just talking to him. I don't like him talking to no cops. Come on, we're leaving. I said, come on. Halloween came early this year, guys. Hold it right there. Colby, you want a piece of this? Come here. My pleasure. and I got through with them, none of them were ever able to light a match again. I just can't figure out whether the father knew something or he's just naturally hostile. Well, running with that crowd, take a guess. Where are those sunny smiles I've come to know and love? At home and in bed where they're supposed to be. Elaine, what can you do for us about this guy, Adam? Oh, you can't keep him in my office if that's what you mean. But I want him off the street for a couple of days. I am conducting a homicide investigation. My only halfway decent suspect is out on bail, and these nuts are running around trying to execute him. You want me to hold him? Yeah. On what charge? Harassment? Assault? Guaranteed he makes bail in two hours flat. Well, why don't we try attempted murder? Listen, if we'd have been there five minutes later, Jacobs would have been dead. Oh, nice try, Frank. I can't make that stick. Assault, and that's it. We'll book him, print him, and arraign him. Then he's out the door. Freddie, you heard what the lady said? Why don't you go do that? On my way. OK, Mr. Adams, you're out of here. Colby, you seen the key to the lockup? Yeah, I ate it. Hey, come on, man. Where's the key to the lockup? Hey, look. Hey, what the hell is going on here? Come on, give me the key to the lockup. What's this? Hey, 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 come on. Hey, 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 What's happening here? Nothing, sir. Well, it's a pretty loud nothing. Kevin asked me to take Mr. Adams down for processing, and we couldn't seem to find the key to the lockup. Do you know where the key is, Colby? Yeah, I could probably find it. Well, you find it, and find it fast. Because I want that sewer rat out of here. Quick. Come on, let's go. 
I'll get your picture taken, Mr. Holmes. Don't expect me to believe you've got the third queen. You're not that good a bluffer. Oh, no? No. I know exactly when you've got a good hand because you start to talk faster. My brother used to do the same thing. Paid my way through college. So, I'm going to raise you a quarter. Well, in that case, I'll have to raise you by the limit. Seventy-five cents. Okay. I'll call. What do you got? Two pair. <laughs> Three eights. That ought to do the trick. Uh, 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 uh. Two pair of queens. Harry, you set me up. I didn't set you up. Oh, no? I let you set yourself up. <laughs> Are you two going to play cards all night? When was the last time I had someone I could play poker with? I'll see you both in the morning. Passed out at the table, I assume. Sleep good, sweetheart. Daddy, she's not Jewish, you know. <laughs> it's only a poker game. It's not an engagement. Harry, are we going to play poker or what? There you go, Mr. Adams. Door to door service. Thank you, Detective Carson. I appreciate your help. No problem. That's what we're here for. Maybe there is hope then. Maybe. It's not simple, separating what you feel from what you have to do. What are you saying? You know what they were planning to do with Jacobs? Well, they're uh, planning on opening the investigation, even including the possibility that it might be someone in the guard. Somebody settling an old grudge, something like that. It's absurd. Mr. Barrel was a great man. Everyone respected him. It'll probably lead nowhere. It's pretty clear what happened, wasn't it? It would seem so, wouldn't it? I better be heading back to the station, see if I still have a job. Rick, answer the damn door. Hi, Rick. Hey. I'd like to ask you a few questions. I, uh, my father's inside. What the hell are you doing here? I told you we didn't want to talk to no cops. We have some questions to ask your son about Martin Barrow's murder. The cops asked us questions at the station, and we told them we didn't see anything. We'd like to ask Rick for ourselves. Come on over here for a second. Rick, hey, no, hey, 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 we want to ask him a few questions, Mr. Don't Brennan. Don't you hear good? I said no way. The kid's a minor. You want to talk to him, you'll have to get a court order. I told you, we didn't see anything. I heard what you had to say. I'd like to ask Rick what he has to say now. Dad? Shut up! Wait a minute. Hey, what are you doing? You calling me a liar? Hey, hey. you! You want to beat me up like you beat up the kid? Is that it? You tell him that. Oh, you just did yourself. Mr. Brennan, we are going to get what we came for. Now, you got a little dirt under your fingernails already. If you are a smart man, you will sit right down there and you will listen to what Rick has to say. Now, this is important, Rick. Do you know who killed Mr. Barrow? Yes. Who? Oh. It was Jacobs. He stabbed Mr. Barrow. Are you sure? Rick, you're gonna have to sign a statement down at the police station after you swear that that's true. It was Jacobs. Okay, he stabbed Mr. Barrow, right. and then he ran off. I said it was Jacobs, so it's Jacobs, okay? Dave, what are you doing here? Excuse me, sir. I wanted to tell you, Mr. Adams, what you said in your speech tonight about Jacobs being let off? Well, we're trying to fight that, Dave. That's what I wanted to tell you. It's not going to happen. My boy saw it all. He told the police. What did he tell them? He actually saw Jacobs do it. He saw him stab Mr. Barrow. Well, it's uh, gratifying to know that someone so young can have enough courage to speak up for the movement. I always tried to raise my boy the right way, Mr. Adams. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't know how much it changes. Well, you know the courts. Uh, they'll probably find some way to let him off. We have to keep the pressure on. We have to stick to our plans. Perhaps you'd like to join us, Dave. I'd be honored, Mr. Adams. We can never cease in our vigilance. With members such as you and your son, we cannot help but grow stronger. Thank you, sir. 
Let's go. Let's go grab a bar. Not one part of this case that sits right with me. Eric? I couldn't sleep. Well, uh, sit down. Let's talk. It wasn't Jacobs. It was Mr. Adams. He killed Barrow. I saw it. I saw who did it. I'd be lying if I said I never thought of it. I can't tell you how many nights I lay in that bed upstairs thinking of ways to make them suffer. But I suffer. There is justice, Mr. Jacobs. Sooner or later. Justice is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. Do you believe that, too? I don't know. I guess it was how I was brought up. <sighs> Deal. Uh, it must be the station. Yes? Sarah, is your father there? Um, just a minute. It's for you. Thank you. Yes? Make sure you're alone, Jacobs. Uh, I need a pad and pencil. Would you mind getting it from the kitchen? Sure. Who is this? Have you seen your wife lately? Elena? No. Harry? Harry, don't! Come on. How long ago? Elena, Elena. All right, ask the daughter where the mother was buried. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. That was Christine. Somebody called Jacobs about his wife, and then he took off. Why don't you call Freddie? Let him know what's going on. Come on, Frank, you're saddle. Right, look, take care of the kid, okay? Get him a soda or something. Sure, Mr. Adams. Because I thought you'd want to be a part of it. One Martin Barrow was worth every one of these stupid swine. Jacobs killed him. Your own son saw him do it. Yeah, well, I'm sure he'll get what's coming to him. Why don't we go, Mr. Adams? Because we have to do what we came here to do. We have to make him pay more than any jail will make him pay. Go on. Push it over. It's only a piece of stone. Show him what you think of it. Your son saw him do it, didn't he? Didn't he? Oh, my God. He told me you did it. He told me it was you, but I didn't believe him. has arrived. This is crazy. Crazy! The man's a danger to the whole movement. Come on!
He's got a gun. Let's see your gun, Adams. Come on. I'm not running. Am I supposed to admire the pathetic bravado of a weaker race? What are you waiting for? Shoot. Come on. A little closer. Come on. Closer. Do it. None of you ever paid for what you did to Elena. Maybe you'd get away with it twice. You're mad, Adam. So, Jacobs is the mad dog, Brennan. He killed Beryl. Then he killed you. And then he killed himself. Whoa. Yeah. I'll make you pay. I was gonna die. I let you go to prison for killing me. This is much better. Take it easy, Jacobs. You said I was a mad dog. You're not gonna pull that trigger. Afraid of being bitten? The weaker races. People did to Elena. Never have it in them. I want to see you squirm. Crawl. You're not hard enough. Like you made her crawl. Jacobs, Adams, hold it. Don't try it. The concept of hate is something that's easy to take for granted. We all have something we hate. Somebody. When it really gets to you is when it's directed at a whole people. Because of the color of their skin. Or the place they worship. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's give you a hand with that. Those people use hate in its purest form, undiluted by any trace of compassion or understanding. It's strong stuff, hard to work with. They have to remain vigilant at all times, feeding the hate, nurturing it. I thought my story was going to be about people like Burrow or Adams, who could harden themselves, keep their hate strong. But it isn't. It's about Rick Brenner, and the way one moment of seeing your enemy as a person can make that hate evaporate. At least, that's what I'm telling myself, so I can sleep tonight. I'm sorry I didn't say anything before. I guess I was just scared. You came on in. That showed a little grit. Most people can't get past being scared. You did. Thank you. Man, I've never seen you like that. Well, I don't mind going undercover. But the thought of those guys thinking I actually agreed with them kind of ate at me. Frankie, you should have seen him, man. The way he slugged him, I didn't know Freddy could punch like that. I didn't even know he could make a fist. <laughs> 